As digital marketers, we spend a lot of time in the advertising interfaces. Creating campaigns, reviewing performance, and making optimizations can be pretty time consuming, but there are some automated solutions we can use to get some of that time back. Today, I wanna to show you how Facebook ads automated rules can automate some of those tasks for you and get you back to the strategy tasks that the machines can't do for us. Once we're in a Facebook ads account, there are two places you can go to create an automated rule. The first is going to be this drop down right here where you can see rules, create a new rule and manage rules. The second is going to be in the main navigation up here in the top left. You'll see the nine dots for business tools. Click that and open it up. And then we're gonna scroll down to advertise and under advertise, you'll see automated rules. If we click on that, it will take us into the manage rules interface within Facebook Business Manager. Here you can see there are no rules set up already. So all we have to do is click create rule to get started. You can see here that Facebook gives you a quick description of what automated rules do. They automatically update campaigns, ad sets, or ads in bulk. So again, effectively what this is doing is trying to help save you time because you're telling Facebook to make changes on your behalf when you meet certain criteria. So the first thing we need to do is give the rule a name. So I'm just gonna use a placeholder here, otherwise it'll throw an error. But then the next thing we get to do is choose what we want to apply our rule to. So currently you can see that it's on all active ad sets, but you can also choose all active campaigns and all active ads. One thing to note is that this is a limited set of options because we are in the manage rules section of business manager. If we hop back into the ads account, we're gonna have a little bit more control. If we choose from this dropdown, you'll see that we can create a new rule and it'll bring up the same window. But one benefit you have from being in the ad interface is that you can select certain options to apply rules to. Let me show you what that looks like. If I come over here and check the box next to this first campaign, and then I come up, to the rules box and I click create a new rule, you'll see that the apply rule to drop down now says one campaign instead of saying all active campaigns, ad sets, that sort of thing. You can actually open this up and see a few more options. So you can say one campaign, meaning that it'll only adjust things for this one campaign at the campaign level if the campaign as a whole meets the criteria that we set. You can set it to all active ad sets within this one campaign or all active ads within this one campaign. And then you also have the option of all active campaigns, ad sets and ads just like you normally would. But this option up here makes it much more customizable compared to what the other options are. We can also get more specific and choose a number of different things within our campaigns. Let me show you what that could look like. I jumped to the ads tab within this campaign and I chose four ads. And let's say I wanna apply rules to only these four ads. I can then come and choose the rules option, create a new rule. And now you'll see that the rule applies to four ads. It's only going to show at that specific level. If you open it up, you'll notice that there is not the ad set available. There's not the campaigns available. You're only setting up something at the lowest level, which is ads, or you can still revert back to all active campaigns, ad sets, and ads. So remember that when you want to apply a rule to something specific in your account, you're probably going to need to check a few boxes to make sure that the apply rule to section is set up exactly how you want it to. For now, let's hop back into Rules Manager to finish filling out our example. For the sake of this rule, I'm just gonna stick with all active ad sets as my apply rule to layer. Next, we can tell Facebook what action we want it to take when the rule fits the criteria. So basically think about what change you want to have made when you hit the conditions that we're gonna set below. So you can set this up as either to turn off the ad sets, you can turn on the ad sets if they're not already on. You can send a notification and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So this is something that's really helpful if you don't necessarily want Facebook to make a change, but you want it to alert you so you can come in, look around and then potentially make an adjustment yourself. At the ad set level, we have a number of different actions that can be taken that the campaigns and or ad levels don't have. You can adjust the budget either by increasing or decreasing daily budget or lifetime budget. And then lastly, you can also adjust your manual bid. You can either increase your bid, decrease your bid, or again, scale bid by a target field. So there's a lot you can do at the ad set level. I know I teased a little bit that we have more options here, so let's see what a campaign and ad do. 
at a campaign level, you can just turn off the campaigns, turn on, send a notification, and then since some campaigns house the budget for the campaign if they're using campaign budget optimization, you can also increase and decrease the daily or lifetime budget on a campaign. But you'll notice you can't adjust the bids because those are not done at the campaign level. Those are only done at the ad set level. If we go up to ads and choose the all active ads section, there's much fewer options here. We can only turn off the ads, turn on the ads, or send a notification. So depending on what action you wanna take in your account, make sure that the apply rules to level will match what changes you wanna actually make. So now that we've decided what action we wanna take on what portions of our ad account, now we get to choose the conditions that those pieces have to meet for this rule to run. You'll notice the first thing down here, Facebook says all of the following must match. So everything you add in this section, either your campaign, ad set, or ad has to meet every piece of criteria for this rule to run and apply to it. The first portion of setting up a condition is going to be based on either a statistic of performance or some sort of setting within the account. So if we open this up, you'll see the first list shows up of the most common is either spent, lifetime spent, frequency, results, it already has cost per result chosen. There are also some other options, mobile app install, website purchase ROAS, lifetime ratio spend, and then there are a number of different things down below. This video would end up being two hours long if I walked you through every single option that you could choose here, but take a look and scroll through a number of these and see which ones make the most sense for you. For right now, I'm only gonna do really two options, and the first I'm gonna do is, let's just do something based on website purchase purchase row as. So the condition we're setting up here is that we want to turn off ad sets if the website purchase row as meets some criteria. In this instance, you probably don't want to turn them off if your purchase row as is very high. You probably want to turn them off if it's low. So we can change the condition here and say if it is smaller than, we'll say 300%. So if your account has some sort of minimum on return on ad spend you wanna hit, you can easily set that up here and pause any ad sets that are not meeting that criteria. You'll notice there were a couple other options in this dropdown. You can do either is between or is not between, and then obviously is greater than was one of the other ones. Most of those don't necessarily make sense for a purchase row as, but again, with all of those different options that are available in that metric or setting fields that we looked at just a minute ago, one of these might make sense for you. There are some further customizations you can do on this rule by clicking the three dots here, and you'll see the additional filter options will pop up, and you'll see that you can set additional filters for object level, whether it's either default for this whole rule, or if you wanna change something at the ad, ad setter campaign level, and then you can change the time range that this specific condition looks at compared to the entire rule. So if for some reason you wanna look at purchase row as for the last seven days, but we have some other conditions in there that are going to be based on amount spent or something that's going to be for the lifetime, you can set those up for different time ranges, but that's a little bit more advanced than what we're looking at today. So I'm gonna close this up and now let's say we're happy with our purchase row as is smaller than three so we can click add and now the condition is applied to the rule before we clicked add it was not applied but now it is and it's shortened up and you can see it's in a lot more succinct section if you want to then also apply an additional value here we can click the plus button and now we can say maybe that the amount spent over the lifetime is greater than $1,000 in this rule, we're giving something $1,000 worth of backing to see if it can hit a purchase ROAS of three. If it can't do that after spending that amount of money, we probably wanna spend our money someplace else. So we've still given it a fair shake, but it's not meeting goals, so we're gonna turn it off. The next thing we get to set is the time range that this rule is going to look at. As I mentioned earlier, this is going to be for the entire rule, whereas that drop down I showed you earlier would just be for this ROAS portion of this rule and it would not apply to lifetime spend. But since I didn't set that up, we're gonna let this rule stand with only the time range default for the entire rule. So if I click this drop down, it gives lots of different options here as to what time range you can have Facebook look at. This is going to be more useful for rules outside of the two examples I'm giving you today, unfortunately, because we already have lifetime spent chosen up here, which means that it already needs to incorporate a lifetime worth of spend. But let's say if I would have set this just to spend here or spent as they have it, it would be able to then be flexible based on the time range that we choose. So the default is going to be lifetime, which means that Facebook is going to look back at the lifetime of performance for this campaign, 
add set or add. In this specific instance, we're looking at just the add sets. And it's going to then see if the lifetime performance meets the conditions that we've set. You can then set it for a lot of different time ranges, whether it's today, yesterday, the last two, three, seven, 14, 28, or 30 days. You can then also include today in some of those stats, and you can do some different ranges from last 14 to last seven days. You can do last 60 days to last 28 days, lifetime to last 28 days. There are lots of different custom time ranges that you can use here. For now, I'll just leave it as lifetime. But take a look through all of those and see which ones make the most sense to you and make sure that they will match whatever criteria you have set. If you have a low spend account, it probably doesn't make sense to have your criteria be $1,000 worth of spend and your time range to be only today because you're probably not gonna hit that threshold almost ever. So make sure that the time range and your conditions match so that your rule will actually run. The next thing we can do is customize an attribution window specifically for this rule. The default is going to always be to use the account default, which if you haven't changed it, that is going to be a 28 day click through and a one day view through conversion. We do have a video that shows you how to change your account default attribution window if you wanna check that out in the upper right. But for the most part, most of you probably still have it set as that 28 day click, one day view. If you want to adjust that, you can click custom. And just in the same way, you can adjust the view through conversion to either 28 days, seven days, leave it as one or switch to none. Or you can change the click through attribution and have it be either 28 days, or we can go lower to seven, one or none, which none wouldn't necessarily make sense. So for right now, I'm just going to leave it as the account default, but you can customize the attribution window for whatever conversion actions you have in place if that is something you need to do for this automated rule. The next thing we get to do is schedule how often Often these rules will run. On other platforms, there are lots of different setups of how often these rules will run. Facebook's default option is to run this rule continuously, which means it runs it as often as it possibly can, usually about every 30 minutes, and it'll just keep running it and seeing if any portion of your account or the portion that you applied this rule to meets the criteria, and it'll just keep trying to run. In this instance, since we're setting something up for lifetime spend, purchase ROAS of three or higher, this would be a good candidate for something that runs continuously because it's always trying to find an ad set that has spent over $1,000 in its lifetime and is not meeting that minimum ROAS that we wanna see on our ad sets. So it's gonna turn it off as soon as it sees it, even as soon as it hits the $1,001 mark, it's gonna turn it off. So having this run continuously would make a decent amount of sense. But there are some other options we have. We can also set things to run daily, which is going to just run once a day at 12 a.m. Eastern time. Other accounts might say a different time, but this is the one that mine says. Then you can adjust it to also be custom, which is a little bit interesting. So let's take a look at how you edit a custom schedule. Once you click custom, it's gonna open up this option. You'll see there's nothing here just yet. So then we can edit this custom schedule down here. Now it opens up this window and you can tell it which days and times you want to set a rule to run. There's gonna be a checkbox for each of the days of the week. So you can choose Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, as many of these days as you want. Just for right now, I'm gonna make these go away. And then all of the different time options to the side of each of the days are going to be the same. So right now it's going to default to run at 12 a.m to 12 a.m., which means that it's going to run once at 12 a.m. on Sunday. If you only want the rule to run once at 12 a.m. every day, then daily is going to be the right option for you. But if you want it to run more often than that, but not as often as continuously, you can set these rules up to run pretty much as often as you want on whatever days of the week. So since we have 12 a.m. already, let's go ahead and add another timeline. And now we can set it up to run, who knows, between 2 a.m and it'll default to 2 a.m., which means that it'll only run once at 2 a.m. again after running at 12 a.m., or you can set it up to have this end time be 4 a.m., which means that between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m., this rule will run continuously. So every 30 minutes, so since this is two hours, it should run about four times during that time frame. If you can't tell by my tone of voice, I kind of find this custom rule schedule to be a little bit silly, if I'm being honest. It's just a lot of customization for making sure that a specific rule runs, but you know, depending on whatever your needs are, maybe this is highly customizable for you. I personally end up finding that a rule either needs to run run continuously or daily, and that's about good enough for me. So I'm gonna click out of here, I'm gonna click close, 
and I'm gonna set this back up to run continuously. One drawback to Facebook's automated rules versus other platforms is that there's not an option to run things once, meaning I want to schedule this rule to run on January 1st of 2021. It's only going to run once and then it's done. There's not an option to do that in here. So that could be where the custom schedule comes up and then you just turn things off when you're finished with it. Who knows? But these are the three options that we have available for scheduling these automated rules. Lastly, we get to choose the notification that we want. You'll see that this on Facebook is a gray check mark, so I can't remove that. And what that means is that you'll get a notification on Facebook in your same ads notification section that you would for just about anything else that you get. You can then also check or uncheck if you want to get an email based on this automated rule. And the good news, especially if you're running a rule continuously, is that you only get an email once per day if any of your rules have conditions that have been met or if new rules are created. You're not going to get an email every 30 minutes that says, we didn't change anything based on your continuous rule. That part's good. So for right now, I'll just leave it checked as email. You then get to choose the subscriber to that email. You'll see by default that my name is chosen down here. But if you wanna add another team member to that, you can just by coming in here, setting it up and searching for that team member and then adding them here. So this way you can have other team members included into these automated changes, even if they're not the ones who set up the rule, but they'll be aware of what's going on in the account. Once you're finished, we just need to come down here and click create. We get a little alert that says the rule is created. And now we can see that we have a line item here and we can easily come over and turn this rule off if we want to. So this is where we can apply either turning a rule on or off. The next thing you can do is come over here and click preview and we can see if this rule is actually going to do anything. So let's go ahead and click that. That was pretty quick. This is a relatively small account, but it said if your rule were to run now, none of your selected ad sets would meet your conditions because none of them over their lifetime has over a thousand dollars in spend and a row as smaller than three. That's a good thing. Now we can close it and we can take a look at some of the other actions we have available. You can edit the rule if you need to. So by clicking this, it'll open up that same builder. You can manually tell Facebook to run it. So maybe if you have this rule run once a day, but you come in and you decide that you want to run it again midday, you can manually run this rule. And if you decide you don't need this rule anymore, or it's not doing what you want, you can click delete and get rid of it. For right now, I'm just going to turn this rule off. And now it's still in the ad account. It's still available if I want to turn it back on, but you'll see that the rule results, it never ran. Rule is not being checked because it's not running right now. It is not currently active. I do want to show you one second rule and I'm not going to go through the entire setup, but this is something that I personally find to be very useful and that's creating a rule based on campaign ad set and ad settings. So let's come up and create a new rule. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to click apply to all active campaigns just to have it be done. We're going to come down to the conditions down here. So you'll remember I opened this up. There were a lot of different options that you could choose here. If you open up the settings section, you'll see campaign name, objective, buying type, spend cap. The one that I like to use is this campaign name, or if you've chosen the apply rules up here to either add sets or ads, this will say either ad set or ad name. I'm a stickler for naming convention and I find it to be very important because you can utilize it in a number of ways just like this with a little bit of automation. So let's say I chose campaign name, contains, and then let's just say that I chose holiday 2020. Having naming convention like this allows you to set up automated rules that can help you pause certain holiday campaigns in this example, or maybe something that you have for a promotion or a giveaway or something along those lines, simply because of the name that has been applied to them. You don't have to go back through and manually check all the boxes to make sure that something is going to be turned off at a specific time. But this would also be useful if you have evergreen campaigns that you simply substitute sale, ad create, in so that way you don't have to set the entire campaign or ad set to end on a specific day but you can make sure that the ad creatives that mention that sale get paused on the right day this is where one of the issues of Facebook schedule comes into play so I'm gonna click apply here as I mentioned earlier the schedule doesn't lend itself to running once so although I'm trying to pause campaigns with holiday 2020 in the name I can't set that to happen on just January 31st here I would need to come up with a custom schedule and probably what makes the most sense is I would do something within a week of when I want these to pause and I would choose the day that makes the most sense. So maybe if it's currently Sunday when I'm trying to set up this rule and I want the ads to pause next Friday, 
I would just click the Friday option. It'll run at 12 a.m. to 12 a.m. It'll meet the criteria because the campaign name will include holiday 2020 and it'll pause. The downfall here, like I've mentioned a couple of times, is that you can't schedule it for a specific date. So you would need to do it within a week of when you want this specific campaign ad or ad set to be paused. But this is how you would get around that issue. It just means that you have to do things within a certain time frame prior to when you want it paused. As you can see, there are a lot of things you can do with Facebook's automated rules. They're not the most robust that we have across all the digital advertising platforms, but there are certainly ways that you can set up some easy rules that if something hits a certain condition, you can take an action and the machine can do it for you so you can get back to doing the things that the machine can't do for you. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.